Hello everyone, I am Gabby Turner and today we're doing a pick a card reading asking the question why did your soul choose to incarnate at this particular moment in history? So this is obviously a very pro profound and transformational moment in human history. And uh, we're just going to look into that. You know, why did you make that choice? Why are you here? Why did you choose to be here in this particular lifetime? So we have three reading options here in front of you. So get calm and centered and allow yourself to be drawn to which pile is calling to you. This this is a reading where you might be drawn to more than one option. Um, the cards on the top of the stacks are taken from this Earth Warriors Oracle deck by Alana Fairchild. And the first one says, uh, Pono Pono, Immeasurable Power of the Heart Way. So that's reading number one. Number 10 is uh, Kai Tiaki, Guardian of Papa Tuanuku. So we'll learn more about what those are um, in, in the course of the reading. At the end of the reading is actually when I'll address this specific card. But And then number three is Mayu, Soma from the Galactic Heart. So... If images or visuals help you to know which pile is yours, then great. You can utilize those or use whatever um, method works best for you. So whenever you've chosen your reading, just look for the timestamps below. While you're down there in the description box, take a moment as well to go ahead and subscribe to my quarterly newsletter. That newsletter comes full of discounts, freebies, and wisdom. So I would appreciate if you could sign up for that. It only comes out four times a year, so I'm not going to be flooding your inbox, but it is a wonderful way for us to stay in touch with each other. If you're not subscribed and you enjoy this reading, be sure to subscribe before you leave today. And if you enjoy the reading, I would uh, appreciate it if you could just give me a little thumbs up. That helps me out a lot, of course. All right, with all of that said, I will see you at your reading. Welcome to everybody who chose reading number one. We're going to look at this card last of all. Uh, but I'm just going to keep it there in the background for now. We have some other cards that I'm going to pull out as well from your stack. And I'll also be shuffling uh, tarot cards as necessary uh, throughout if, if I need clarifiers. But let's look at what we've got. From the Fairy Wisdom Oracle, we have the Brat card. It's from this very beautiful deck. And this, this card is about... Um, never really being satisfied, you know, like always feeling like enough is a, a never, enough is never enough. Nothing, you know, no matter what you accumulate or, or whatever, it just doesn't satisfy. Underneath it, we have the lily, which is spiritual love. We also have this energy over here, which is very spiritual in nature. So I feel like in this lifetime, you're being given the opportunity to really spiritually evolve to the point of maybe not being this person who's never fulfilled. You know, it may be that it's been just difficult for you to achieve happiness or contentment in life or something along those lines. This is not meant to be a judgment. Uh, this is just, you know, we acknowledge that we all have areas uh, in which to grow. I mean, I would say that I personally can very much relate to this idea of nothing is ever enough. You know, like nothing ever truly satisfies. I have definitely have significant periods of my life and even still moments where I feel that way. But you're learning in this lifetime. You're being presented with opportunities for your soul to understand a greater truth about love and how love is actually what you're trying to seek. Uh, when maybe you're looking for other things to fulfill you. And because you are learning that lesson so fully in this lifetime, you're moving beyond maybe more petty or lower vibrational concerns to understand what really matters. And the, what really matters is love. This Secret of Camelot card, it says the authority of spirit. In the book, it talks um, about... And this, it comes from this deck, Oracle of the Hidden Worlds. But 
it talks about the fact that you are like a mystic or a very spiritual person, as we've already seen. And in order to, you know, all of us, in order to spiritually evolve, we have to go through this process of, um, you know, working with our ego, moving beyond the ego. So that's what we see over here is that you're, you're doing that so successfully to the point that you are a very spiritually evolved uh, mystical person. But what this card also says is that you're that type of person. You have the spiritual wisdom in a world where you are actually going to be involved in some way with people who are administrators or like more worldly figures in the world, like the managers, the administrators, the policy makers, things like that. So you bring that spiritual wisdom to the world and you, because you've learned this lesson yourself, you can teach other people why love needs to be our first priority rather than some of the other more worldly concerns that people in positions of power often think are important. So you, you're you someone who can merge those two worlds of um, the spiritual world and the earthly world, you know, heaven uh, into earth. You're helping to bring heaven into earth into the more earthly concerns. Underneath this, we also have the beetle, which says good fortune and dog barking advice from a friend. So you're just meant to be like a spiritual guide to other people in a sense. The beetle is also, it's, you know, I don't use this deck that often, but even when I do, I, I very rarely pull this card, but it's a very intense, it, it, this is a very multi-dimensional animal. Um, and as a spirit animal, it's telling you that you have access to fifth dimensional or even higher dimensional awareness. So you are very much a mystic. Um, let me ask more about dog barking. I think part of this is that you might have friends who are less spiritual or mystical than you, but you can still meet those friends sort of halfway and you can kind of come to this point of understanding that both are needed. You know, the spiritual and the earthly are both needed. Let's just ask a little bit more about that. Of course, this also may mean that this is a lifetime in which you are meant to learn from your friends as well, that it goes both ways. Yeah, I feel like, yeah, finding peace and balance, finding peacefulness, that point of inner peace between the earthly con earthly concerns and more spiritual concerns. Um, it may be that this has been an area where you've struggled in this lifetime or even in past lifetimes. And so you're given the opportunity here to have a greater s stability or foundation. Again, this is, to me is very much like, bringing spirit into matter or heaven into earth. You know, we're not here just to party and have a good time. We're not here to just enjoy the sensual pleasures that earth provides. We're also here to uh, bring in the, the spiritual aspect of it. The but, but both are necessary. So you may have at times been someone who denied the more material or sensual aspects of life because you felt like that wasn't spiritual enough or something like that. But you're learning from other people how to balance those things out, I feel like. Yeah, I do feel like this has probably been a struggle for you to balance out those two aspects of living, the earthly and the spiritual. We also have freedom. It says live wild and free. Choose your freedom, claim your independence, and underneath we have the shark. Take care or there, there will be a loss of material wealth. I think that you are probably someone, like I said, who's more spiritual, so you're less concerned with the material world. You want to be free of that and just fly free. Um, but in this, again, there's a very strong balance here of heaven and earth. You have to um, understand how to also seek out material stability at the same time. So that's a strong spiritual lesson for you in this lifetime. Let's see what else we've got here. We've got divine purpose. You have a very strong divine purpose in this lifetime. We have health, school, animals, 
and travel. We also have, oh, this is interesting, this little card. I use this in a different reading about spiritual lessons, but I'm using it again for you all. I deserve good health. Providing myself with good health is a blessing, not a burden. So, yeah, obviously that is a strong lesson for you in this lifetime. So in terms of why are you incarnated, incarnated into this particular moment in human history, I mean, this is a time when we, in some ways, we have so much abundance that it's actually toxic to our health and you know, there are other environmental factors as well that are toxic to our health and things like that. So, yeah, you're learning how to balance all of that out. Yes, you're you're trying to enjoy the sensual pleasures of life, but not in a way that um, keeps you from still having good health. So balance. We also have divine purpose. So you have a strong life purpose. And, you know, just with the way that she is has her head down in this picture it makes me feel like this is someone who you know life feels like a burden sometimes I feel like you're probably someone who's really been through it you've been through a lot of difficulty a lot of strife and so sometimes it's hard to maintain this connection to your life purpose because it just seems like everything is so hard uh, but you do have a strong life purpose, and these are actually from Doreen Virtue's Life Purpose Oracle deck. And this one says, school, the answer that you're seeking involves going to school. So in this particular lifetime, you were meant to learn from an actual, um, you know, like going to college, university, or something like that. And maybe there's something that, you know, this moment in history uh, allows you to learn that you couldn't have learned or that knowledge wouldn't have been available to you maybe at another point in the timeline of Earth's history or of human history. Let's ask more about that. School. Okay, we get Seven of Cups reversed. Hmm. Ace of Swords reversed. You... You've probably had a lot of options available to you in terms of school. Maybe it's been difficult for you to decide which field of study is the one that you want to choose. Okay, what is the message about that? It's sort of like there's a love of learning that you're meant to pursue. You're meant to be pursuing a love of learning. Um... And some of that comes from school, but there's also like this extra level of wisdom. It's like what you, maybe what you learn in school or like college, university, that type of thing, it, it teaches you something, but also there's this sort of greater wisdom where you're also recognizing that not all of your knowledge comes from school. Some of it comes even just from deep within you. I feel like you are probably an, a very old soul, and so there is, is a lot of wisdom that's already just within you that has to be tapped into. So that's one of the things that you're learning, how to tap into that deeply held soul wisdom. You're, you are a very intelligent, wise person, but it's like you all already have that well of wisdom, but you seek greater wisdom at the same time. Interesting, interesting. Always seeking more wisdom from outside yourself, but again, learning how to balance that with the wisdom that's already inherent with, within you. And I feel like when you combine those two, it's just like, you know, these lightning bolts of awareness come to you. You might not have these lightning bolts all the time because this tower is reversed, but it's like these two things have to come together. This wisdom that's already within your soul and the wisdom through actually like reading books or going to classes and that type of things. It's it's like when those two hit each other, it's like two flint rocks coming together and creating this spark. But it's greater than a spark. It's like, you know, this lightning bolt, and again, of awareness, enlightenment. You are meant to really become even more fully enlightened in this lifetime, tremendously so. And then we have animals. You understand animals and communicate with them intuitively. Trust your inner guidance as the animals are part of your life's work. 
Yeah, maybe you are afraid of that, though. You're afraid of pursuing this aspect of your life's work. Hmm. You might... You might feel like your life purpose has more to do with people. And you're... Why would you be afraid? Or what would you... Some of you might want to... Maybe you want to follow like a... A vegan or vegetarian diet. Or do... Do some sort of work to help animals. And you're afraid of hurting other people's feelings. So that again, that could be... There's a lot here about balancing out different intentions that you have you know like uh, you want to help animals but you also want to get along with other humans and you're not wanting to hurt people's feelings something like that yeah i feel like there's an issue here of you are someone who believes in animal rights or caring for animals but you also don't want to get in arguments with people about it so that might be about you know being a vegan or something but it might just be something else where you feel like you care very deeply about certain animal rights issues, but you are you don't really want to trouble the waters too much. So it's just tr like trying to find the balance of harmony there. Creating a harmonious existence for animals, but also uh, being able to find a way to do so that also maintains peace and harmony with the other humans in your life. Then we have travel. Your life purpose involves traveling. Um, yes, and we have the world card. You were meant to be traveling the world. And so why did you incarnate into this particular moment in human history? There might be something that you can see and experience in other parts of the world in this timeline right now that maybe you couldn't have in other timelines. And it's important for you to be able to access, yeah, so much wisdom. You're definitely becoming extremely enlightened in this lifetime. That is for certain. Hmm. Okay, so yeah, world travel is going to be important to you. So if you haven't done that, um, it it is meant to be a part of your life's journey. So let's just wrap it up with the message from this card here. Now with Alana Fairchild's, well, this is only one of her decks I have, but my impression is that her other decks are probably kind of like this too. But I, I just feel like reading straight from the book is going to be better than me just trying to inter interpret it from looking at the card itself, which, you know, different Oracle decks lend themselves in different ways. But let's just read here from the book. Immeasurable power of the heart way. The heart has the power to heal in a way that the mind cannot understand. Do not allow your mind to distract or frighten you. You are a beautiful child of the universe, and divine love lives within your heart. A willing heart is all that you need to transform any situation that is troubling you. Recognizing this power does not evoke feelings of pressure or anxiety, but rather of peace and joy. Lightness of heart and relief of mind are here for you now. And we did see that before here as well with the Four of Swords, that inner peace is part of your life path. The divine within your heart has the power to transform a situation that is troubling you. Do not be intimidated or think it is too much for you or the divine to handle. Do not allow yourself to intellectualize or analyze a situation to the point of feeling confused or paralyzed. I've been there before. Healing through the heart on any uh, and all issues that have plagued you or a loved one can and will happen. Let your heart feel the faith it needs to feel so that it can rest in joy. Divine healing wants to flow abundantly for you. Open up to receive it without hesitation or condition. Pono in the Hawaiian tradition has deep and multiple meanings, one expression of which is the return to order. There is a perfection of peace, beauty, and fulfillment that, that the divine has planned for the lives of all beings. Through the use of human free will, we have at times moved away from what is in the divine plan, stumbled on the path, 
and become ensnared in terrible suffering and frightening delusion. This can become contagious, infecting other souls with the poison of hate, anger, and fear, and further separating our human collective from the beautiful grace that the divine has intended for us. It then becomes difficult to use our free will With wisdom and our spiritual disconnection can create far-reaching negative impact for others and the planet. One only needs see the pain in the world to understand this. Yet there is a simple spiritual discipline that we can practice to restore the world and all hearts within it to rights again. Yeah, and we saw earlier, you know, you were meant to be one of those people who helps bring this spiritual element into the world more strongly to balance out these other things. The divine dwells in your heart as a healing power and wisdom, which tenderly alleviates suffering, liberating the body, mind, and soul. This is the immeasurable power of the heart way. In the Hawaiian tradition from which it emerges, it is known as Hoi pono pono, or to set things right. The heart power thrives through this simple four-step practice that can be done by anyone, anywhere, for any reason or situation that they would wish to transform. This may seem unexpectedly easy, and it is. So why isn't everyone just doing this and healing the world right now? This is because only those who have come far enough on their spiritual path to have placed the heart wisdom above the dictates of the mind will be able to accept the practice. And you are one of those people who has come far enough on your spiritual path. The practice itself is not something that you can approach through the mind. The mind will resist it because it asks for us to take unconditional responsibility for everything that we encounter, whether it be in our own lives or out in the world. Even if those situations seem to have nothing whatsoever to do with us. The moment something comes into our awareness, we are responsible for it. The mind can rebel at this and say that it is unfair or unduly burdensome or shaming to think that in to think in that way. That is because the mind confuses responsibility with guilt and giving with deficit. The heart, though, is joyful at the prospect of spiritual responsibility because it understands that it offers the empowerment to make a difference and that healing one helps heal all. This oracle foretells of great healing for you as you open your heart to Pono. So the healing process here, we'll just go through this together. Choose a person or situation to which you can offer healing. So take a moment to think of a person or situation that you would like to offer healing to. Gaze at the image on the card. Recognize the heart power depicted. Place a hand on your heart. As you tap into the beauty of your heart, including the feelings of compassion, goodwill, and wanting all things to know that they are loved and do not deserve to suffer. When you feel that heart connection, you are ready to complete the four simple steps without them having to make sense to your mind. Feel the truth of what is happening in your heart as you complete the process. Step one, I'm sorry. Say aloud, I am responsible for this situation. I feel so sorry for this. I am responsible for this situation. I feel so sorry for this. Let your heart be in compassion as you might feel the emotion that is evoked by what you are saying. Step two, please forgive me. Ask for forgiveness. You don't need to think whom you are asking it of. Just say, please forgive me. Please forgive me. As you speak these words, 
Feel the remorse you connected with in step one. As you ask to be forgiven, those of you sensitive to energy may feel or sense a release of energy taking place. Step three, thank you. Say thank you. Again, it doesn't matter if you have a sense of whom or what you're thanking. Before you even say the words, you may already feel the gratitude that begins to pour through you. This will increase as you say the words. Step four, I love you. Again, this will evoke a response in the soul, this time an outpouring of love. You may feel this consciously, but even if you don't, trust that it is happening. Just go with the process and say, I love you. Let yourself feel love as you say the words, I love you. I'm sorry. I am responsible for this situation. I feel so sorry for this. Please forgive me. Thank you. I love you. Place your hands in prayer and relax for a moment. You have completed your healing process. All right, so I hope that this reading has been helpful for you guys today and maybe healing. Um, So thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you later. Bye-bye. Welcome to everybody who chose reading number two. I'm going to start out by lighting some Palo Santo for us to kind of set the mood and clear the energy from the previous reading. You can take this moment as well to sort of maybe take a couple of slow, full breaths. And center yourself. All right. <clears throat> so this card we're going to look at at the very last. I'm just going to put it over here for now. And let's see what we've got. We've got the chocolate brownie fairy. This is funny. Sometimes when I'm trying to figure out which decks I want to use, I'll say, okay, I'm going to pull one card from this deck, and if it seems like it relates to the reading, or if it feels right to me, then I'll use this particular deck. This is the Fairy Wisdom Oracle deck, and that was the card that I pulled when I was trying to decide whether or not I wanted to use it for this reading or not. The Chocolate Brownie Fairy is about just kind of enjoying the good things in life, enjoying the the fun things. We have intention, and we have open like the lotus, flowering spirit, revelation, and maturity. We've got teapot. Try to adjust this a little bit. Bell, announcement, and mule. And we have some other cards here that I'm going to look at in a moment. And uh, as I need to, I will also shuffle and draw Uh, from tarot as well if I need clarifiers so chocolate brownie fairy the teapot underneath it says deep friendship with someone of the same sex so this is interesting you're you're meant in this lifetime to really uh enjoy really deep abiding and enjoyable friendships I I feel like these you know like having moments where you can really just chill out and you know, eat some chocolate or some popcorn or whatever it is that you like. But, you know, having those moments where you just don't take life so seriously. Let's use this um, modern witch tarot and see if there's anything else. Yeah, I feel like for you guys, maybe friendship in this lifetime is uh, presented to you as a bit of a spiritual lesson in the sense that it's difficult for you because... When I look at the Knight of Cups in this particular deck, it shows someone who's very emotional and very sensitive. I'm thinking highly sensitive person. Um, And, you know, specifically this makes me think of, I don't know, it makes me think of Amy Winehouse for some reason. Someone who has these very strong but sort of turbulent and a, a little bit sort of dark emotions. And you may have felt like it's difficult for you to find 
people who you really connect to in friendship. Maybe you've had times when you couldn't trust people, and so it's been a difficult thing for you to achieve, perhaps. You also have the King of Pentacles here wanting to come up reversed. <clears throat> yeah, you're meant to be learning that there are people who you can trust in friendship, that you can find people who are safe, secure um, foundations for you. That some of the trust issues regarding friendship that you've experienced in this lifetime, you you know, yes, that's not to discount. If you've had some really difficult friendships or people who have really um, taken advantage of you or things like that, that's not to say that those were not real or that they don't matter. But it's also saying that part of your uh, journey in this lifetime is to learn how to Realize that you have more control over this situation than what you thought. <clears throat> we also have intention. Be clear and decisive. Focus on what you really want. Be bold with your requests to the universe. And we have bell announcement. I, I kind of feel like this is recognizing as well that just in general, you have the power to ask for good things. You don't have to just settle. And this may have been like a, an especially difficult life for you. But you're meant to sort of wake up to the fact that you can ask for more and you're worthy of receiving it. But you may have just experienced so much hardship that it's hard for you to trust that. Yeah. Your intuition, you're, you're thinking sometimes that your fear is your intuition, that your fear that you are not worthy of receiving good things. You're hearing those fears in your head and thinking that that's your intuition, that that's just all that you're ever going to get or all that you deserve, that the universe isn't listening, God isn't listening, your angels, however you want to think of it. But in this lifetime, you are going to reach a point where you recognize the power that you do have. And when you do that, you will be able to move past these sort of like murky, more difficult emotions and really embrace life with vigor and maybe more vitality than what you've experienced. You're going to understand unconditional love. You're going to understand, if you haven't yet, what it really means for someone to truly love you unconditionally. You will feel that overflowing of love. It may take a while, and this lifetime may require a certain sort of endurance of you as you navigate these more difficult situations in life that have made you feel that you can't trust people, that you can't rely on people, and, and all of that. But this blessing of really feeling what unconditional love really feels like this is uh, meant to be part of your experience in this lifetime. And then we have open like the lotus, flowering spirit, revelation, and maturity. And underneath it, the mule. Someone is extremely stubborn and unwilling to change. And I think that this is indicating you because we have all this pink energy, even here. This is like a kind of a darker pink energy on these lanterns. Uh, I think that's what they are above the donkey. So this is like, this is love energy as well, which is available to you. But life has been so difficult and you've had so many pull, people pulling on your rein, so to speak, pulling you around in life that it's hard. It's very difficult. I mean, the Knight of Pentacles is a similar kind of a stubborn energy where it's going to take time to sort of open up like the lotus, to unfold like the lotus to really the truth of love and to be able to really experience it. But this is just part of your journey. And I, I do want to read just from the book here. This is this card is from the Oracle of the Hidden Worlds because I just feel like the book message could be especially helpful uh, to you. You have opened fully and flowered, so it's already happened, but you may not recognize it yet. If you feel you have not, this is the time to contemplate this lotus and see what takes place when you, like it, fully open up and bloom. It takes time to open, 
in nature and in life, and we do so because it is in our very nature to expand and open up to our full potential, to all that we are, and also to open up to other other people. This lotus is being its most potentialized self. But we humans often stop at certain points upon the opening process and feel and grow comfortable there because we have received cultural and societal approval to stay there and go no further. But your full potential lies in continual expansion. For you, it is not so much the continual expansion of the physical self, for we all grow old. This is the transitory nature of physical existence. But we expand in the soulful self. We keep opening our minds, expanding our hearts, extending our spirit and unfurling the petals of consciousness until we are open and in bloom. All about us are these bright sparks of the divine. Like the fairy tending to the lotus. These are our sparkling moments of divine connection coming at unexpected times, reminding us of our sacred nature, urging us to go beyond what our world wants us to think of. Not the natural world, but the constructed human world. And when these moments come, that brief glorious moment of bliss helps us to continue on the soul's journey to first bloom, then evolve. This card is your reminder to be like this lotus, to open up, to extend, to explore your full potential, and to remember that where you are now may not be where you are being urged by the soul to go. Come back to your deepest values. Measure your life against those and make that small change that will see you flower today. I am opening up like the lotus flower, and when I am open, the divine can reach me. Yeah, so some of this feeling of being loved is available to you, but you you have to open up to be able to fully receive it. You know, it's like, let's say you're clutching on to something that you feel that you want out of life, and your hands are like this clutching on, but the universe is trying to shower down blessings Your hands are clutched like this and you have to open your hands up to receive and say, yes, I'm worthy of this. I don't have to be clutching on for dear life anymore. Let's see what else we have. We have Archangel Michael. Yeah, lots of, you know, we have this, his fiery sword here, which is utilized a lot by people uh, in meditation or in prayer. You can request for Archangel Michael to assist you with cord cutting. So that's the first thing that's coming to mind here that, this opening up that you're doing in this lifetimes, it, lifetime, it um, comes to you more fully when you can kind of like let go of old baggage from, you know, toxic situations, toxic friendships and things like that that you've experienced in life. Make a wish. This is so similar to this, you know, intention. Um you know, be clear and decisive. Focus on what you really want. Be bold with your request to the universe. The more you kind of let go of this baggage of hurt and pain from the past, the more you kind of like um, rid yourself of that and lighten your spirit and are able to open up, the more belief you'll have and the more you'll see that when you wish for something that you truly deserve, You know, again, we have this pink energy of love. You'll see those blessings. You'll see that love being bestowed upon you. We also have builder. Your innate ability to build and create brings you a deep sense of accomplishment. And with this kind of like knight of pentacles and mule, we do have a very earthy energy. You know, like you, I feel like are someone who, you know, Pile number one was more about someone who's very kind of mystical and spiritual, which doesn't mean that you are not those things. But there is a strong part of you that is meant to be a little bit more connected to like, you know, um, third dimensional reality or, you know, just concrete reality, earth-based reality, and, and really like build concrete things. 
you know, it doesn't mean that you have to build buildings or something like that, but you're creating something of substance that can continue to exist even after you are gone. Or, you know, building a life for yourself that gives you, again, again, just like this sense of security and safety. Creative expression. Your soul longs to express itself creatively. I, I feel like because he's pointing towards this lotus, this is one of the ways in which you can find that connection to love that may seem lost to you at times. We also have family. I, I feel like for some of you, you've had issues in your family life that may have also been part of why you've had difficulty with friendships. Um, but it says loving your friends and family is central to your life purpose. Again, you are meant to ha have these very loving bonds with people in this lifetime. Any clarifiers for any of these? So with Builder, we have the chariot reversed. There is something significant that you are meant to build in this lifetime that perhaps you haven't completely taken action on just yet. Oh, well, you're definitely meant to build and forge friendships and very close social bonds with people. So that's part of it. Um, that, But it requires you to sort of like have this balance between your own lightness and shadow and the lightness and shadow of these other people you know none of us are perfect right we don't want to get taken advantage of like we have been in the past but we also have to kind of like come to terms with all of it <clears throat> in order to be able to move forward yeah and i think that for you uh Learning not to be so suspicious. I mean, there's a difference between being cautious and doing what's right for you so that you can continue to move towards calmer waters and serenity rather than, than these more troubled waters that you've been swimming around in. You, of course, you have to make wise choices about how you, who you want to be in this boat with. You know, you don't want to share this boat with toxic people. That's not going to get you towards these calmer, more serene waters that you're seeking. But at the same time, if you are so skeptical and paranoid of everyone who enters your life, um, then you're not going to be able to build these social bonds that this is part of your life lesson. Part of the reason why it's been difficult for you to do this is because it is a strong lesson for you. You know, it's like you've, you're taking on an advanced degree in how to form social bonds despite the fact that you've been through difficulty. Yeah, creative expression as well could be a way to sort of help you connect. Um, maybe finding other people who have similar creative interests or like also want to express themselves. Like, you know, sharing what your self-expression is with other people and vice versa and feeling connected to other people through that. Yeah, and then we had the Queen of Cups reverse. So again, I do feel like you may have not had the parental support that you needed and that it feels like an obstacle right and it is it's an obstacle but it's also an opportunity for you to learn how to grow beyond that and learn how to trust that people can be loving without strings attached that people can be emotionally present and not ne neglectful of you and that there are people who instead of placing their burdens on you maybe that's something you've experienced with friends and family in the past, there are people who care enough about you to help you lift your own burdens rather than adding to those burdens. And then we also have how to take flight by jumping into the unknown. Yeah, again, part of what your um, why you incarnated into this moment in time is just to be to, to fe be able to feel more trusting of the unknown, that the future doesn't have to be so difficult just because the past has been. And also, I am unattached. I let go. Nothing drains me, and I drain nothing. Life unfolds beautifully from this. Yeah, so this goes back to this kind of letting go, cord cutting. You know, I would suggest doing cord cutting meditations and things like that, a actively doing things to sort of let go of this baggage of where people have sort of drained you in the past. 
So let's end the reading with this message from the Earth Warriors Oracle. I'm just going to read this from the book because I feel like her messages are so profound that I would not be able to do it justice otherwise. So I'll get it down here so we can read together if you want. If you're not already watching in HD, you might be able to see this better if you do put it up into the in the high definition. All right. You are mm, Kai Tiaki, guardian of the divine feminine. Your relationship with Mother Earth, Papa Tuanuku, is sacred, empowering, and healing. You are destined to become more spiritually intimate with her, sharing in her creative potency and wisdom. Lean into her and trust in her support, even as you serve her by courageously voicing truth. She is your great ally friend and healer and as you dedicate yourself to her she dedicates herself to you so yeah i'm going to read more but maybe part of this process is for you to learn that mother earth herself is supporting you so that you can feel like you have that firmer foundation if you can start to see all that mother earth offers you then maybe that will help you to understand that you know that source of support um Healing and friendship can come from other people as well. Make peace and let go of past issues around being abandoned or not understood or of feeling unsupported. Yes, lots of, you know, lots of, um, uh, what is the word I'm looking for? Anyway, we keep hearing this message in this reading. Make peace and let go of past issues around being abandoned or not understood. Or of feeling unsupported, as those experiences need no longer color your worldview. Trust that you belong here and that your connection to the earth goddess will support you in all ways. You are sensitive, and rightly so. Never judge your sensitivity or feel that you are overreacting, but also Allow nature to calm and soothe you so that you can be focused on accomplishing your soul mission. If you feel that you are on your own when you would like some help, allow the Divine Mother to be your friend and guide while trusting that at the right moment more allies will arrive. The Earth Mother has her own sense of timing and you are not forgotten. You are just growing according to her wisdom and grace. Have faith in yourself and in her. In the Maori worldview, humans are not seen as separate from nor superior to the natural world. Instead, humans uh, lost my place are part of nature and have a sacred role to preserve and protect the Earth Mother. Her guardians are known as Kai Tiaki, the ones who take action to defend her and safeguard her natural resources so that she and we can thrive. There is an innate instinct in the human soul to seek an emotional connection with the natural world for pleasure and healing. When this connection is denied, which is the basis for all environmental abuse, the result is great suffering. The more soul you have, the more your personal identity becomes intertwined with nature and the greater the devastation uh, you will feel in the face of environmental degradation. This is not being overly sensitive. This is being awake at a soul level. Disconnection from the divine feminine harms humanity in ways that eventually lead us to psychological pain and physical disease. Perfectionism, impatience, thinking about what we can get, instead of what we can give, all these erode self-esteem and emotional fulfillment. They distort what is meant to be sacred sexuality into a performance, a perpetuation of emotional wounding and abuse, which drains our creative power and prevents us from being able to feel for our truths. 
you know, and you've had so many situations that have sort of drained you and dried you up and it makes you feel that you can't possibly create the loving life that you want to create. We end up feeling confused, anxious, and uncertain about our future. These are signs that we need to heal and strengthen our connection to the natural world. To restore our connection to the sacred feminine. The Kaitiaki soul can help us reconnect to the divine feminine rather than dismiss, exploit, and use her. Loving our mother and feeling respect and reverence for her will restore our vitality and energy and help us gain a sense of well-being. And I think for some of you, just because we had that Queen of Cups reverse, some of you might have particular difficulties with your actual mother. And this is saying, you know, a way, may, perhaps a way to heal that is to start feeling more connected to the Divine Mother or, you know, Mother Earth. Um, you intuitively understand the need for this sort of relationship to the earth and you must remember to cultivate your connection so as to grow peace in your soul. It is part of your destiny to read the wisdom of the ancient lineages from which you have evolved, from those ancestors who lived in a world very different to ours, who knew how to sustain themselves in harmony with the natural world over long periods of time, and who can help us remember that life requires a sustainable relationship with the Earth Mother. Their wisdom is encoded in the natural world through taking the time to tune into the earth, you are one who can read her records and share the wisdom teachings that you perceive. Honor your ability to be a devotee of the Mother Earth. Allow her and your own courage and intelligence to empower you on your path, to support you in speaking your truths, especially when they go against the grain. For it is that, for is that not what creation is all about? Opening up to something new. Healing process. Re-earthing is a sacred practice to help you plug into the consciousness of the earth goddess in a truly grounded, healing, and nurturing way. In this way, you both receive from her and become more able to give to her through your increasing attainment of your life's work and personal well-being. To re-earth yourself... Spend a little time each day in physical contact with the earth. Physical, physical touch, barefoot or with hands on dirt and grass or on the trunk of a tree is sufficient for this process. A beautiful addition to this healing process is to say a simple prayer or statement to the earth at the beginning and end of your re-earthing practice. It might be, I love you at the start and thank you at the end. Or it could be a deeper and more personal conversation about gratitude, hope, and trust. And about the wise use of your creative power or your concerns about the world. You might ask her for her assistance and guidance so that you can honor the Divine Feminine in the best way possible according to your talents and abilities. The more you do this practice, the more love and devotion will arise and the stronger and more conscious your connection with the Earth Mother will be. And the more empowered you shall become to fulfill your destiny. Don't be afraid to lean on her, to need her, and to let her help you help yourself and the world. Wow, so that really connected to, I feel like, to everything that we've already said here in this reading. So for those of you who chose reading number two, you are ready to take flight by jumping into the unknown and trusting that Mother Earth is there to protect you and guide you um, and offer you so much love and support. So, all right. Thank you guys for watching and I'll see you later. Bye-bye. Hello to everybody who chose reading number three. I want to start out by lighting some Palo Santo to help clear the energy from the past reading and also to help us uh, connect more fully to our spirit guides, our angels, our highest self, Mother Earth and Father Sky. Be with us today in this reading. Help us to connect to our clarity and our wisdom. 
understand the messages presented today and how they can help us along our journey. All right. So this is the card that you chose. We're going to look at that more fully at the end of the reading. So I'm just going to put that over there for now. Let's see what else we've got. From the Fairy Wisdom Oracle, we've got Jewel of the Sea. I think I don't think I've ever actually seen that card, but that's so pretty. All right, Jewel of the Sea, we've got Imagination. Mm. And we have Oracle, Sacred Living, Spirit Seeking, and Intervention. We have Wreath, which says... Sorrow over a loss. We have hand in need of help, assistance, and guidance. And we have fair woman. Dealings or relationships with a woman with blonde, gray, or white hair. Okay, let's see what this is. And we have some other cards here as well that we'll get into. And I'm also going to use uh, tarot as needed to clarify. So this card in the book, The Jewel of the Sea, it talks about how, you know, the oceans are symbolic of the fact that there's actually a lot about life that we aren't aware of. You know, the oceans are the least explored part of the planet where we live. And, <clears throat> and so that's part of the message is that in this lifetime, you are meant to uncover kind of the depths of yourself, the depths of your soul, and to do this through maybe um, an exploration of your emotions, because water, of course, is also symbolic of our emotions. And then we have wreath, sorrow over a loss. So I feel like you are actually meant to, in this particular lifetime, you have been and, and probably will still be um, confronted with moments of grief where life feels very sorrowful sorrowful and painful <clears throat> there will be losses in your life you know which is you know it's that's true for all of us but i feel like the message here is that you're meant to sort of uncover um explore through your emotions of grief and loss you can uncover more of the truth of who you are so there are some emotional depths there to be plunged for some reason, I'm also feeling that you might have um, a particular connection with Atlantis that you're bringing into this lifetime, especially because we have this card which says Oracle. And this is very much about the fact that you are an intuitive person. You have a very direct, you have an ability to um, connect directly with like spirit guides, angels, and other um, higher dimensional beings and also just to your own psychic ability and there's something here about all of this that you bring into this lifetime probably because it's needed right now um, this fair woman I feel like it just means like in this sense like impartial woman or you're a person of whatever gender who can bring this sort of impartial uh, balance because you see kind of the higher picture. And it's because you have all of this sacred wisdom that you've gained throughout multiple lifetimes. We also have imagination. Envision a new reality. Give yourself permission to dream. Believe in unlimited possibilities. And hand, in need of help, assistance, and guidance. So I feel like people do come to you for guidance, and you're meant to be someone who gives that guidance. Even in this card, you know, this <clears throat> fairy mermaid, she has uh, this kind of like, I don't know what this is, a fairy seahorse sort of coming to her, almost like it's asking for guidance and support. It's got its hands clasped, clasped and she's holding out what looks to be a lotus and it's a lotus that has like a little orb over the top of it. So, yeah, I feel like you guys have this profound connection to other, you know, higher dimensional beings or maybe elemental beings, um, maybe all of the above. But you, you kind of have this um, higher level perspective of what life is all about. And you're able to offer that understanding to others as like a gift, a gift of love and understanding you can give people a hand in life um, when sorrowful events take place. Yeah, I think you're someone who's meant to help other people understand why we are even at a collective level experiencing these 
um, you know, hardships in the world. Let's pull some more cards here about this. Yeah, I think that a lot of people are very confused and this confusion keeps people sort of like attached to their shadow or not able to separate themselves from their shadow or not able to understand that the, you know, the darker or more difficult experiences we have in life, those painful experiences of loss, turmoil, all of that, some people are, are having a lot of uh, difficulty understanding what the gift is in that or what the opportunity is in it. And you're someone who does see that because you're so connected to like heavenly guidance and support. It allows you to understand, you know, both on an individual level, how to move ahead in the world, but also like on a more collective level, like you know, how we can sort of envision a better future and actually sort of balance these light and dark elements. You know, life is full of love, but there is also evil to balance it out. And how do we accept that truth, that evil and strife and difficulty exist? How do we accept that truth and sort of combine it with the energy of knowing that love exists and and goodness and possibility and hope, how do we combine those two truths and bring them together to sort of pull us forward like these two sphinxes pull forward this uh, chariot in a healing way, in a way that heals the world and makes it a better place? Yeah, you're, you're someone who can just envision um, a, better, a better reality and you can help other people to see that better reality as well. Because... There are a lot of people in the world whose minds are very closed to this sort of optimism. All they can focus is on is maybe more, the more negative, which is, you know, that's very human. Um, that's just, there's no judgment against that, but that's just where people a lot of times get stuck. But you're like, I see the truth here, you know. It's, uh, you see the man behind the curtain, you know, like a Wizard of Oz reference. Like, you know that there are maybe people pulling the strings, making us believe certain things that aren't really true. But you're like, I see that people are pulling the strings, that there are people with evil intention in the world making us suffer or leading us to suffer. But I also see beyond that, there's something an even greater truth beyond that. And that is the truth of possibility and hope and optimism, which you have, you know, your connection to that awareness brings you inner peace, which you can then uh, give to other people. You know, it's like it's darkest before the dawn. But I think you as well have been someone who you didn't just, you know, you may have come into this with this some past life awareness, but that doesn't mean it was already there in your consciousness. I think you as well have had to recognize some of this wisdom that you have here and this optimism and faith and ability to envision something better and trust that we can achieve it. You came to that knowledge partly through your own experiences of loss, where it also felt to you that, you know, you wouldn't be provided with the love or the material resources or opportunities or whatever it is, um, you've also gone through these periods of pessimism where you felt like, you know, all we've ever had in life is strife and turmoil and that's all that I expect to have. So you also, I feel like, you know, the, re the reason that you are so good at supporting people and understanding this in a fair, impartial way is because you understand that mindset. You have been there. And you're someone who has had to learn to be courageous. <clears throat> you didn't always have that courage. You had to learn it. You know, the strength card, we look at this, and this woman, she looks very calm and serene, right? Ch taming this lion. But just because she looks that way doesn't mean that's how she feels inside. And I feel like you're someone who has learned to be courageous and confident and optimistic 
even when there's a part of you inside that feels very much the opposite of that. And that's how you've gained your own strength in life. And that's the strength that you're able to give other people as well. You know, true courage is facing your fears, facing the possibility that, you know, evil exists or or that there are people behind the scenes sort of pulling the strings and and trying to make us have a, a bad experience in life. Uh, for their own ends, you know. You're someone who is able to have courage in the face of that. You don't, you're not trying to pretend that it doesn't exist. But you're saying, I can rise above any fear that I have and be in touch with this more courageous part of myself. And that's true courage. Courage is not, you know, overcoming something that you don't have any fear of. Courage is overcoming, uh, when you do have fear, when you are lacking confidence, being able to find that confidence anyway, being able to see the possibility of good anyway, even when life has presented you with so much difficulty and pain. Let's see what else we've got here. We have shielding. I think that you're probably a very highly sensitive person. You're definitely, I, I think, very psychic. And so, yeah, you've had to, because you've had all of this pain as well, and you're aware of maybe these mm, more toxic energies that exist in the world, one of the things that you're here in this lifetime to do is to learn how to shield yourself. Yeah, you're, you're also just, you're very connected to signs, to omens, to intuitive messages here. And that helps you... Uh, that helps you to help other people. Yeah, sensitivity. What did I say? Highly sensitive person. And you're becoming more sensitive. And you need to make changes accordingly. Aha! Uh-huh. So there is a, a message here as well for you all that you do need to really be very proactive in learning how to shield yourself. One of the messages from the book from this card as well was about... Um, you know, like if you're taking a shower, imagine imagine anything that doesn't support you, anything energetically that doesn't support you to be washed away and taken into Mother Earth for uh, transmutation. She can take, Mother Earth can take any sort of toxic energy and renew it and make it into something that is actually fertile and supports growth and goodness. Um salt baths or something that I do a lot as well, but any kind of purification or shielding of your energy. I also uh, like to like literally hug trees because they have, you know, these deep root systems. Trees are very spiritually wise. They do have a very strong consciousness. You know, they can't, you know, express their consciousness in the way that we do, but they do have that and they have that awareness and connection to mother earth And so they can help you as well. Like if you feel like there's a lot of toxic energy that's built up because you are a highly sensitive person and you pick up on other people's energy easily, then you can actually hug a tree or hang on to a tree branch and just ask that tree if it will help to siphon off some of that toxic energy for you uh, into Mother Earth so that she can heal it and um, recycle it. Infinite abundance, yeah. I feel like... You are, part of your life purpose is learning what true abundance is and that, that, that it's not something that can take, be taken away from you, even if there are these nefarious elements in the world, these, you know, people with not so great motives in the world that try to make you think that you don't have access to abundance. You're someone who's meant to learn that um, abundance is always your birthright. And you're also meant to teach that to other people. You might even be meant to write about it or communicate it in some way. You heal, inspire, teach, and entertain with the words that you write. Yes. So this also could just be any form of communication, but writing might be an especially strong way in which you can reach other people Um to, to help them understand these insights that you yourself are learning so well in this lifetime. We also have, I look for and find the good in everyone, even when their shadow is really, really showing. Yeah, 
that goes back to what we were saying before. Like you see the man behind the curtain, but you're, you accept that reality and you say, well, I'm not going to judge the man behind the curtain for pulling these strings or for, print, for pretending to be something that he's not. But, you know, I do see it. I see it. Um, but I can also still look for and find the best in that person. I can still find love and compassion for them. Um, my impact is greater than I thought. Let me be mindful of that. Yes, you are realizing these spiritual truths that we mentioned, but you're also realizing that you have an ability to teach other people these spiritual truths and make such a tremendous impact in that way. This is a very beautiful reading. So we're going to end with this card, my you. And it's from the Earth Warriors Oracle. And I'm just going to uh, to read from the book here. Because she these are so well written. I wouldn't really be able to do them justice simply by trying to summarize. Okay, if you're not already watching in high definition and you want to follow along, uh, changing into a high definition view of this reading might make it easier to see the words if they look blurry at all. <clears throat> the Divine Mother's milk of the galaxy is feeding your soul. Expansion of your horizons, your spiritual purpose, and your sacred responsibilities is taking place. Divine potential within you is awakening at a higher turn of the creative spiral of consciousness. This oracle is prophecy of ascension and grace. Your soul has been going through a deep spiritual feeding process and is growing rapidly. The evidence of this in the outer world will be a sense of expansion and opportunity, reach, connections, and new levels of spiritual experiences. This oracle foretells the welcoming in of a new phase of life, newborn energies and fertility, whether biological, creative, or psychological, are being stimulated. The oracle indicates the discovery, development, and expression of talents. An increasingly public profile, which moves you into the spotlight, can help you fulfill your divine life mission provided that you keep your inner connection to spirit as the highest priority. The oracle speaks of soul healing around matters of trust, spirit, mother, and abundance. Mayu, star goddess of the Milky Way, was seen clearly in the skies of the ancient Incas. In Western traditions, the Milky Way, let's move this around a little bit, in Western traditions, the Milky Way is recognized as a metaphor for nourishment and the milk of the heavens. When she appears as an oracle, it is an omen of happiness, satisfaction, and fulfillment. If you develop your spiritual practice, you shall come to experience feeling drunk on divine bliss, like a baby in an ecstasy of complete fulfillment through the mother's milk. When we connect with the galactic heart, it is a sign of spiritual advancement. We are growing in such a way that our being becomes ready, willing, and able to take up more spiritual space in the atmosphere. You will express that spiritual growth in your life according to your talents. If you are a thinker, your ideas will become more inspired, expansive, and original. If you are a healer, you will experience the flow of a new quality of divine consciousness through your work. If you are a leader, you will experience a feeling of being overshadowed by something truly great, kind, and helpful, while at the same time feeling more fearless, bold, and confident, to speak your truth and guide those in your care. Yes, this resonates so much with what we've said so far in the reading. Whatever the truth of your soul encounters with the galactic heart are granted in order to evoke, expand, and empower it upon the earth. 
Some interpretations of the Vedas from ancient India see the Milky Way as the heavenly Soma, the nectar of immortality and the drink of the divine. Soma can feed feed the soul, but like any food, healthy or otherwise, too much at any given time is hard to digest and can create more harm than good. More divine light and energy is not always better, at least not when we try to take it in all at once. We need to learn when enough is enough to detach from the Divine Mother's breast and rest in contentment and fulfillment of the present moment. To allow ourselves to be spiritually fed, to know when to latch on and when to detach from the inflow of spiritual energy, to allow for the mind, body, and soul to adjust to the increased levels of light and spiritual nutrition, and to metabolize, uh, I lost my place. Oh, and to metabolize that for healing growth, we need to feel trust and surrender into the divine feminine. If we have had difficult issues around trust, support, and nourishment as human beings, then clearing those issues through grace so as to be able to receive the heavenly nectar without greed or fear is important. Mayu offers healing of these matters with grace. Digestion and integration allow us to utilize the blessing and become ready for further expansion when it is time to be fed again. We trust that her sacred food will be available when needed, We can learn to rest into all that the Galactic Mother will provide for our soul, growing us into the fullness of our spiritual radiance and maturity, one dose of her extraordinary blessed Soma at a time. Say this prayer aloud with one hand on the heart if possible. I invoke the unconditional love of the Galactic Heart. And give thanks for all that is good, true, and nourishing of my being on all levels through unconditional love. I surrender with forgiveness and blessing any issue to do with mothering or being mothered, whether too much or too little. I release myself from false guilt, shame, and judgment now. I release the mother figures in my life with forgiveness in my heart, for I no longer wish to hold on to old pain. I acknowledge I am worthy and deserving of nourishment straight from the sacred milk of unconditional love from the Galactic Mother. May all mothers receive healing and guidance, blessing and assistance from the Divine Mother of all souls. With With trust, I open myself now to receive what is needed for the ecstatic fulfillment of my own being through divine grace, with gratitude, so it is. Now it is time to close your eyes and rest for as long as feels good. Whether you wish to meditate or sleep, or just close and rest your eyes for a time. Give yourself permission to do that now. You can begin that process by gazing at the image on the card for a moment. Gently focusing on the light at the heart center of the galactic goddess and imagining, feeling, visualizing, or pretending that you are stepping right into that heart light as you either zone out into sleep, rest your eyes, or meditate now. When you are ready, Ground yourself with some deep cleansing breaths in and out as you emerge from your rest. Move your body a little and ground yourself in the here and now. You have completed.
your healing process. So thank you guys so much for watching this reading. I hope that it was helpful and healing to you. And I shall see you later. Bye-bye.